Welcome to Real Estate Investment Management Brokerage Development, LLC. Insulation, installation. Empowering you with collaborative education. The insulation of this home comprises two phases. Two inches of foam insulation, and then four inches of cellulose insulation. Cellulose can be described as paper material treated with fire retardant. We like using cellulose material because compared to rock, wool, or fiberglass, we think this is less dangerous to the lungs if inhaled and embedded in the lungs. We think if this gets in your lungs, the body may be able to dispose of it over time. However, we think all insulation is very dangerous and you should wear eye protection and face mask, mouth and lung protection and body protection, including gloves when using it and installing it. Notice this picture shows the cellulose bale, which is to be broken up and dumped in the machine in pieces and the blowing machine, which is like a reverse vacuum that blows the cellulose into the insulation cavity and the application hose. This is the bale of cellulose insulation that is fire resistant, sound resistant, and has a insulation property. Another thing you're going to need is insulation cavity netting that's pervious to moisture. We want moisture to be able to penetrate through this. This is called ADO netting, which you can buy at Home Depot. You staple this onto the studs and create a wall cavity, which you can insert the insulation into. Before you staple the netting over the studs, create shelves of the netting every three feet or so, because the insulation will settle over time in the wall cavity. This means it will pack downward and the top of the insulation cavity may lose some of the insulation R value. So create insulation chamber steps within the wall cavity before you blow the insulation in. We recommend using this pneumatic staple gun with an air pressure tank. You will have to use thousands and thousands of staples on one home. It works well, but breaks down a lot. We had to replace it seven times. Another thing we recommend is buying a power cord shutoff switch with light. This will allow you to turn on and off the insulation blowing machine at the location at which you are blowing the insulation. For instance, the insulation blowing machine may be in the garage, but you may be operating the hose and blowing the insulation in the attic. Adding this switch to a series of extension cords allows you to turn on and off the insulation hose at the location you are operating far away from the insulation machine. Consider this diagram. It shows the insulation blowing machine on the first floor and an extension cord goes up to the attic. The extension cord in the attic has a switch with a light and that switch feeds into an electrical outlet near the attic. The insulation operator can turn on and off the output of the insulation hose that reaches from the first floor to the attic with the lighted switch in the attic. This is a very important diagram to operate well. And we recommend you study it and copy it and print it. After you staple the insulation netting onto the walls in the stud, you cut horizontal slits in them, in the netting, and insert the hose and fill up the cavity. 
when you fill the cavity well and full, the insulation will stay in there, although there's a slit in the insulation netting. It mostly seals itself by being compacted. Only while the insulation machine is off, so you don't injure your fingers or hand, you crumble up the cellulose insulation and put it in the machine. Wear a protective suit, protective mask, and ski goggles because you want to avoid getting any insulation, including cellulose, into your lungs, eyes, or on your skin. We think ski goggles are the best type of goggles because they tend to fog less than other types of goggles. We like this SAS protective moon suit because it is nylon and the insulation does not tend to stick to it. Break up the insulation and put it in the machine while it is off so you don't injure or dismember your fingers. Attach the hose to the machine. Put a heavy object, such as a toolbox, on the hose to keep it from being pulled out of and off of the machine connection.